So we got the Spurs and the Nuggets. Playoffs are finally here, thank goodness. How are the Spurs going to deal with Nikola Jokic? The only thing I can really think of is you dare him to shoot threes because his three-pointer has actually not been good this season. And you hope, one, that he misses a few, and number two, he starts to get uncomfortable with taking them because Jokic is such a pass-first guy. But even then, I don't know if that's going to do too much for you because Jokic is, of course, such a good ball handler that he'll just go off the dribble and a lot of times dribble around the big guy who is defending him. And I don't know if the Spurs have a lot of switchability against Jokic in this series because... um. I mean, who the hell is going to defend that guy on a switch? Like, Rudy Gay is a big dude, and DeMar DeRozan's a big dude. They're not big enough to deal with Jokic. And I think he's a little too skilled for Pirtle and Aldridge and Davis Bertans and whatever taller dude they can throw at him to where they can actually deal with him in all situations where he's going off the dribble and all that. So, yeah, I think Jokic is going to do his thing, I guess. The best thing to do is really just dare him to shoot jump shots and hope that he misses. And there is a chance he could miss. And um, maybe that could open up the floodgates for stopping this uh, this Nuggets offense a little bit. Greg Popovich is, of course, very smart. So he's going to think of things that I'm not capable of thinking of. The other thing to do with this Nuggets offense is to stop the other guys. And, I mean, this is something I've talked about a lot. The idea of daring Jamal Murray and Gary Harris and Will Barton and and these guys to make in the moment decisions you know now there is also Monte Morris the difference with him and those other guys is he will make the right decision every single time and Monte yeah I think he's going to be a pretty decent X factor in this series because um he might be the fallback option if one of the Nuggets guards just kind of sucks and Barton has missed a lot of time this season, and, well, not a lot, a lot, but half the year. Uh, his percentages have been rough. Gary Harris has been just worse from last season across the board. Also missed time with injury, of course. And it's going to be interesting to see what Mike Malone does with that, because, I mean, to put it bluntly, Monte Morris has been better than those two this season. But they're the ones that are going to start, and they're the ones that may end up playing more minutes than him, so... Is Malone just going to have the guts to be like, you know what, Monte, you're playing 35 minutes tonight because I really want to win this game. Now, there's a chance that Monte's lack of size kind of kills him in this series because the Spurs' defense, while it's not amazing, it's certainly got a lot of big bodies, especially around the perimeter. So, yeah, that'll be interesting to see what happens with Monte. My gut is it's going to be pretty positive. But yeah, I wanted to give him his own blurb right now because a lot of the stuff I'm going to say about these other guys doesn't really apply to him in my opinion. Do you trap someone? Do you go under screens? And do you just make these guys prove to you that they really are good? Now, there's a potential for that to go really badly for you because Jamal Murray has shown signs as a guy who can make threes off the dribble and all that. So if he gets hot in this series, then I don't know if this team really has a chance of winning because assuming that Jokic is going to do what he's doing if Jamal Murray's putting up high teens low 20s and points then um the Spurs might be screwed at that point especially because the Spurs defense this year it's been so up and down they've had moments certainly but I mean where are they in defensive rating for the year they are 20th which is not ideal for a team that has as much firepower as this Nuggets team does now Again, I think there's a chance you could overwhelm Gary Harris and Murray and all these guys, but it's still going to be a challenge because so much of it is run through Jokic um, with all the cuts and the transition plays that these guys make. So, yeah, the Spurs are definitely going to have their uh, their work cut out for them. Some dudes they could leave open. I mean, I mentioned Jokic a little bit. Even then, you can't leave Jokic wide open because he'll drive to the rim. Millsap, I think you can dare to take jump shots. But even then, he makes the right play so often that uh, simply leaving him open could lead to some things for the Nuggets if they're not three-pointers for him. He'll go off the dribble. He'll hit you with like a spin move. He can, uh, I mean, hell, he'll do like a handoff play with another guy and then set that guy a screen and then that guy could be open for a shot. So I think Denver, 
they're not a very stagnant offense. They're able to adjust to whatever you've got going on because they have so many guys here who can just make plays. I mean, yeah, I've I've questioned Jamal Murray and Gary Harris's decision making all season, but the Spurs defense may not be good enough for me to think that it's going to happen in this series for those guys. Um, anyway, to get to the, the Nuggets' defense, can the Spurs attack this? Yeah, certainly. I think uh, LaMarcus Aldridge's shooting could give Jokic problems. If LaMarcus Aldridge ends up on Paul Millsap, he can post up on him, certainly. I think DeRozan can take advantage of a lot of these smaller guards and wings and get them into the post. Now there are exceptions. There's Torrey Craig and uh, Juancho Hernan Gomez who are bigger bodies. Malik Beasley is like 6'5 and is not a small dude. So there's some options for Denver to go at DeRozan. The thing with DeRozan is he's going to have to be ready to play in the playoffs. I mean, I know that sounds like a generality, but we've seen so many times now where DeRozan just seems overwhelmed by the moment. So he's got to calm down. And I think Popovich can put him into positions that uh, Dwayne Casey wasn't able to as much. So there is that. And DeRozan's playmaking has also been better. So if the Nuggets are loading up on DeRozan when he's got a post up on like, I don't know, Gary Harris, who's 6'4". Granted, Gary Harris is not a super slim dude, but I think DeRozan could still have an advantage there. Then, uh, you know, DeRozan can make some plays out of that. And then between Bellinelli and uh, Rudy Gay, there are other guys who um, can do their thing. Yeah, I do think there's going to be some points scored in this series. It should be mentioned, Denver's defense is pretty alright. I mean, making Jokic actually move on defense I think has helped them out a lot. And Millsap is, of course, Mr. Fundamental, and he can defend maybe not four positions anymore, but he can certainly defend about three and a half. Now, I guess one thing to say about the Spurs offense that could give the Nuggets some trouble is um, outside of Aldridge and DeRozan, they do have a lot of three-point shooters. And... If they're just making those in, and uh, Derek White, Bryn Forbes, Bertans, Rudy Gay, Bellinelli, if these guys just get really hot from three in this series, I could picture that being the difference here because, I mean, I mentioned Millsap and I mentioned how Jokic has been better. That's all there, but it's still going to be a matter of closing out on shooters, right? So that could be the thing that extends the series out for the Spurs. I should mention Patty Mills as well, another guy who can make threes. So, yeah, as far as players for the Spurs, or players for the Nuggets that they can leave off a little bit, I mean DeRozan, honestly. There's certainly times when you can ignore him in the corner when there's maybe seven or six seconds left in the shot clock. Now, that was, of course, under Dwayne Casey, and we hope DeRozan is moving a little bit more um, off the ball, but even then, it's not going to be every single possession. So there's certainly times where you can uh, leave him open just a little bit and he's not going to freak you out from three because he has attempted .6 threes per game this season. <laughs> so yeah, there's all that. Um, honestly, I mean, something else that matters too, the Nuggets have home court advantage. They're 34-7 and seven at home. They've been great at home for... A long time now, and I think that uh, matters. Spurs are bad on the road, which, I don't know. I don't like to get caught up in that stuff too much, but given how good Denver has been in Denver for so long now, that could be the difference between a game going their way and not going their way. So, yeah. I think the Nuggets are going to win this series. A lot of it just comes back to Jokic, because even when I think about the idea of Gary Harris and Jamal Murray being forced to do stuff, they're still going to have Jokic. Like, you can trap them, and then they'll just throw it to Jokic, and your trap is now nothing, right? They just have so many options on offense. I mean, they're sixth in offensive rating for a reason. Like, they're very, very difficult to defend. So, yeah. And on the flip side, Denver's defense has been, you know, not bad this season. Certainly better than the Spurs' defense has been. So, yeah, I'm going to go with the Nuggets. I'll say six games. If it goes seven, I guess that that could be a thing because the Spurs have also been very good at home this year. But I do think the Nuggets are going to win this thing.